Well, hello, gorgeous. How are you guys doing today? If you're new to my channel, my name is Gloria. And if you're on, thank you all for coming back. If you're new to this channel, please consider subscribing. We are late over here. Anyway, as you see, I have a guest. I don't know how long this guest is going to stay here for, but we do have a guest. Yeah. Um, maybe not for so long. But anywho, I took to Instagram, Facebook and asked you guys that I'm going to make a video about my experience in Dubai so you should ask me anything you want to know and you did ask so here we go I'm going to be telling you about my experience working in United Arab Emirates which many people call Dubai even if it's not so if you're watching my video let's just correct one thing uh, for people who call it Dubai it is United Arab Emirates and that is something you need to learn. <laughs> that is something at least you've learned, right? Okay, now let's just jump right into the video, shall we? Okay, so most people wanted to know how I got there and how you guys would get there. Uh, and then they asked me if I did go with a company because someone asked like, did you go with a company? Did you go on your own? Like, how can I go there? And if you did go with the company, how much did you spend? Oh, wow, a lot of questions in one. Anyway, first of all, I did go with a company. It's based in Uganda. I'm not going to mention its name. Because, I'm sorry, but this video is not sponsored and they didn't treat me the best. So, no, I'm not going to give them a free shout out. But I'm glad that the job I did an interview for when I was in Uganda, it's the same job that I got when I reached the other side. So that I'm grateful for. Uh, I did spend around four point something, but that was six years ago. So things do change a little bit. You might spend a little bit more because situations and circumstances change. Okay. And someone asked, like, what are the ways you can go there? Okay. I, I personally think there are two ways. But they could be more, I might not be informed. But mainly people use a visa and then you can use a company. When you use a company, according to my personal experience, it might take you a little bit longer since you're going to go when you're already on an employment visa. Now, when you use a visa, that is going to be so fast because you're going on a visa, you're kind of like a tourist. Uh, you can take a visa for a month, two or three, and then that is quite cheaper. You, but then you have to remember that when you reach the other side, you have to look for a job on your own. So you have to be someone who makes friends real quick. If you don't know anyone there, you have to make friends real quick because they have to show you around, like the metro stations that you're supposed to go to, you what, what, what. And then you have to be someone who is willing to ask for help. Yeah. And, and then you have to be someone who is willing to put yourself out there because you have to go in interviews, you have to drop your CVs everywhere. Like, man, in my personal experience, when you reach there, don't be scared of entering the shops because the shops are really fancy or the places are quite fancy. So you might be like, oh, eh, no. But no, you, all you did was to go look for a job. So print as many CVs as you can. Try to drop as many CVs as you can. They might call you, they might not. You might go for 10 interviews and no one will call you back. You might go for four interviews and they will call you back. So, you know what? Do the best you can do when you're out there looking for a job. Then someone asked me, what's your advice to people who want to go there? Okay, my advice would be is that make your research. Know exactly what you want know exactly what you as a person can do and try to save some money if you're going to use a company going there still you need money to go there and if you're going to use a visa still you need money to go there so either way try to save some money that will help you when you reach the other side and then you have to remember that when you go on this visa you have to work your best to get a job so don't reach there and be comfortable sky we are filming a video please so you have to remember that when you reach there, don't be comfortable. You have to work so hard to get that job. And then when you go on an employment visa, you already have a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not going to be easy, honey. It's not. It's not. But uh, work 
had follow the SOPs of the company that you're going to work for because that's the most important thing. And then sometimes it's going to get rough. There are going to be times when you're going to run to the stockroom and cry, but you'll make it through. And then someone asked me, what was your job working there? Huh, I was a sales assistant and now here's the whole team. Because I said I'm going to be telling you my experience working in UAE. So as I answer your questions, I'm going to be telling you everything that I experienced there. Now, when you go to a sales assistant job, um, I wouldn't say that it's the best. I wouldn't say it's the worst, but it's a good job. It's an okay job to work. Except dealing with people is the hardest thing. Yo, I didn't know how hard it was to deal with people until I started being a sales assistant. Yo, we human beings are way too complicated. Whoop. Like, someone can say this when they mean something else. Okay, I didn't know how much people don't mean what they say. Like, yo, yo. <laughs> they say communication is the key, but I say honesty and communication go hand in hand. Like, yo, I would have customers tell me like, oh, you know what? Like, uh, I want a size bigger. Like, I don't want something that fits me tight. Like, you know, I want, like, I, I want something big. Like, you know, don't give me my size. And you go like, oh, okay, I'll give you an extra size bigger than your normal size. Then you give it to them. And then they are offended. <laughs> they are offended. So now you think I'm fat. You're like, no, I didn't say that. You told me you wanted a size bigger. And then you're like, but... Another thing adding to that is that a customer could really walk into a shop and then they tell you like I should be having a cup of tea because I'm giving you tea guys like yo I'm giving you tea <laughs> anyway the other thing that was really weird like a customer could just walk into a shop and ask you like do you have any offers you're like oh yeah we do have offers and then they tell you like oh you know what we're looking for something very cheap we're looking for something very affordable so take us to that section then you turn them to a section which has stuff that is really affordable and then boom they're offended like oh so you mean i'm cheap you mean like i can't afford like buying the other stuff and you're like so you told me to take you to a section that has stuff that is affordable you know you're trying to be on your best behavior because you don't want a complaint from a customer anyway i could go on and on and on but that was an experience and what i learned from that is that you have to pay close attention to what someone is saying and then differentiate it to what they actually mean like what i would normally do when they would ask me for stuff that is affordable i would take them to start to a section that has discount and all that then i also like offer stuff that is not discounted in order for them to not feel like i'm downgrading them even though that's not what you meant you're just offering what someone asked for but you have to go out of your comfort zone you go you have to go outside the box and you have to think in order to deliver the, the best services so yeah that was quite an experience where was that coming from i don't know but let's go to another question and then someone asked me can you tell us about the jobs that are there because as for me i didn't really know like people who go there on your work as mates Okay, I'm glad that I'm going to be enlightening you on this because baby girl, it's a girl who, it's a woman who asked this question on a girl. Mm, anyway, honey, there are not only made jobs there, there are a bunch of jobs. Except I think that is the topmost job that is uh, planted in our faces and it's way easier to go when you just uh, go to work that job like it's so fast Okay, if you wake up and be like I don't have enough money to take me to, the, to Dubai But I will take any job that comes trust me being a maid That is the easiest way you can get there because it's very cheap You you not have to spend a lot going there. So I think that's why it's the most planted job in our faces but there are a lot of jobs like you can be a sales assistant you can be a waitress you can be a waiter you can be a security guard you can do housekeeping you can be a cleaner you can be an assistant teacher you can be a nurse you can be a tax driver i mean you can be a secretary i mean there are a lot of jobs that you can do 
Uh, okay, someone asked me, what advice would you give to people who have already got jobs and they're working there, especially the ones that are working as housemates? One thing that I can say the most important thing is that don't forget why you went there. Money. So do all you can to save your money. I know it's so easy for you to be distracted like, man, there are a lot of beautiful things out there. There are a lot of things that can distract you. There are a lot of things to spend your money on, but please don't forget why you went there in the first place. You need that money so that you can come back home and have like a start. You know, you can have a life of your own. So don't forget that. I know like sometimes you want to, you know, show off and sometimes you want the latest phones, but uh, it's not going to be worth it in the end, honey. So try to save that money that you're working for. It stresses you out a lot. So try to save it. And another thing, please don't send money to your relatives. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't send money to your relatives. If you haven't gone, oh, that is, you've already gone. Okay, to the ones that haven't gone, before you go, try to open up a bank account so that when you reach the other side, there are very many ways you can send money back home. So when you reach the other side, you'll be able to send money on your bank account and money, you separate the money that you're supposed to send to your relatives from the one that you're supposed to save. That will help you out a lot. And if you did leave the side when you don't have an account, you can still maybe ask your boys for at least maybe one off day if you don't have an off day or you can get sick leave. Go open up a bank account. In UAE, there is no one that is stop from opening up a bank account. Go open up a bank account so that when you get paid, you deposit your money over there and then you send the one that you want to send to the people here separately because that is going to help you save your money dear. The thing is, it's not bad to send money to your relatives for them to keep it for you. But one thing you have to keep in mind is that money is a big temptation. And it's so rare to find people who are honest. So before they chew your money <laughs> with that stress that you're going through, just be wise. Don't. Well, that will be it for this video. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Turn on the notifications bell so that you can be notified anytime I post a new video. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to comment down below if you have any questions that you would want me to answer about UAE and all that stuff. I'll be ready to answer them and I'll answer them truthfully. So, thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, guys. Love you. Bye. Adios. Bye. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Bye.